Welcome to the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative. This is episode number 443. Today, I'm diving back into affiliate marketing for part two. So let's get going. Have you already found business success but feel lonely at the top? Or do you feel like you're at a place in your business where others just don't get it? Or maybe you feel like you have to make yourself smaller in order for others to not feel less than. Or maybe just a little bit of all three. But with all that said, there is good news because I've been there and I see you, sister. I'm Taylor Bradford, the torchbearer of this podcast and sisterhood, and I'm here to lead and inspire you to stay purposely aligned in the success you have found and provide you with support, guidance, and a sisterhood to keep going because I do get it. Your business journey isn't meant to be traveled alone. So grab a notebook, your favorite pen, and a bevy, and let's dive into this together with this latest podcast episode. Welcome to the Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur Podcast presented by Boss Girl Creative and me. Hello, welcome to episode number 443. I'm your host, Taylor Bradford. I so appreciate you pressing play. Today, it is affiliate marketing part two. So if you missed out on last week's episode, episode 442, Definitely start there because we are jumping right back into part two. So I'm going to encourage you to press pause on this particular episode and start with episode 442 because it will make a lot more sense to you with this particular episode. Before I get into this particular episode, let's check out what's been going on in social media. Social media headline number one, Meta faces $600 million fine in Europe over possible violations of evolving data protection laws. Evolving EU privacy laws continue to prompt challenges based on specifics. Social media headline number two, U.S. judge blocks Montana's effort to ban TikTok. Montana residents will continue to have access to the app for the foreseeable future. Social media headline number three, Instagram provides future trend predictions in its 2024 trend talk, which they are saying from fashion and friendship to eras and icks, here's all the trends Gen Z will be driving on Instagram in 2024. For the fashion and beauty category, Gen Z are focusing on sustainable fashion goals in 2024. They are most likely to buy fewer new clothes, repeat outfits, and shop locally. The top five sustainable fashion practices we will see from Gen Z this coming year include number one, buy less new clothes, number two, repeat outfits, number three, shopping local, and number four, thrifting and or shopping secondhand online or in real life. Top five fashion trends in 2024 globally, number one, modest dressing, number two, thrifting, vintage and heirloom, number three, Repeating outfits to be more sustainable, number four, wearing clothes in unexpected ways, and number five, DIY. With social media, Gen Z is all about prioritizing meaningful connections in 2024, with a generation planning to use social media to keep up with their friends and family. A close second was to stay on top of trends, fashion, music, and tech. When asked how they use their Instagram to get closer to someone, the top ways were liking someone's story, sending reels or memes in DMs, and liking a post in their feed. In the lifestyle category, next year is going to be defined as Gen Z's growth era, with many honing in on self-improvement and development for the year ahead. Gen Z's top eras for 2024, number one, self-improvement or development, number two, lucky, number three, unapologetically myself. Gen Z are the generation of self-starters with one in three saying the best way to achieve wealth was through some form of self-employment. 
Gen Z's top three priorities for 2024 are to stay healthy, work out regularly, eat healthy, etc., explore a career path, and travel. Check out the rest of the trend report through Instagram's blog. Social media headline number four, Pinterest launches live test of new body type search filters. Another step towards more inclusive search on Pinterest. Social media headline number five, Musk tells advertisers to go F yourself, calls ex-boycott blackmail. Ex's owner apologized for anti-Semitic posts but bristled over advertisers' response during an interview on stage at the New York Times Deal Book Summit. Also, five considerations for the future of X following Elon's anti-advertiser comments this week. Elon has made his stance on advertisers clear, but will that lead to the end of the platform as we know it? And that wraps up this week's social media headlines. Okay, so let's talk more about affiliate marketing. As you may remember, and again, if you have not listened to last week's episode, I'm going to encourage you to do so, episode 442. So I want to give you an update. As of this recording, I am an official affiliate for the Legendary Marketer program, and it got me in the door. I wasn't sure if they were going to let me in, but it got me in the door, and it immediately said, before I can start being an affiliate for them, I need to take the 15-day challenge, which I have been doing. But I will say I got through day three, so 15-day challenge, I got through day three, And it prompted me to wait until I had a 10-minute phone call. I think it's a Zoom. A 10-minute Zoom call with some human representing Legendary Marketer. Okay, so my call is officially today. It is not many hours from the time I'm recording this. And then I will have the rest of the 15 days unlocked. So I want to kind of talk about what's going on in this 15-day challenge And I think it's a good like foundation reminder about how to be successful with affiliate marketing and choosing how you select who you're going to market for. So again, this is a social experiment for me. I am going to do this program and I'm going to be an affiliate for it and I'm going to document everything that I do. And then also Amazon Associates with their video reviews. So I've already been approved for that. I've been an Amazon Associate forever. But actually filming the content to load in for the video portion of my account, I have yet to do that. But I will get there and I will document that process as well. So let's dive into what I've actually learned so far in this program. Okay, so the first thing they teach you is that websites are not meant to drive sales. Sales funnels are meant to drive sales, which makes sense. You know, your website is basically a gigantic resume for yourself. It is a way to showcase what it is that you do. But then a sales funnel is something very specific built into your website, or it doesn't have to be built into your website, uh, that will drive sales or is meant to be set up to drive sales. So the first page of a sales funnel is called a lead capture page. And it's where you offer something in exchange for gathering somebody's email. And you can follow up with that particular email once you get that captured in your form to present the thing that you asked for in exchange for the free thing. So You trigger an email with an autoresponder. So once somebody gives you your email, you can send out an email to them, thanking them for signing up or getting the free thing and linking the free thing. The other part of that is the next page. It's called the bridge page to get the thing. So you're going to send it in an email, but then you're also going to link to a bridge page that then further talks about the thing that they're excited about. 
and also keys up the next sequence of events. So on the bridge page, you're going to have an add to cart button with whatever it is that you're selling. And then you're going to be like, but wait, here's another offer kind of a thing. So add to cart leads to another page, which is an upsell page where they can either continue with the thing that they just added to their cart or they can add on additional things. So from the funnel, start of the funnel of the sales page leads to a bridge page, leads to a upsell page, leads to a checkout page. So that's basically the setup of a funnel. The true goal of a sales page funnel is to break even on the front end and to make profit on the back end. So what does that mean? Breaking even on the front end means you get somebody into the funnel and you utilize those things. So whether or not it's a $7 product or a $27 product, until you get them on your list where you can upsell in further emails to them or until they get into the other shopping cart area, you're utilizing that $7 to pay for any advertising that you're doing to lead people to your sales page. So the sales page is meant to be breaking even, not losing money, and then your profit comes from the backside with upsells and with additional products that you offer or that the affiliate that you're selling for offers. So let's talk about that value ladder because that is what this is from 7 to 27 to 57 to 197 and above. The more value you give, the more expensive the product becomes or the thing that you sell. So the higher the value, the higher the price and you're stair stepping people up the value ladder. So let's talk about that formula again. Your opt-in page. Your initial sales funnel starts with an opt-in page, with an opt-in grabbing their email address. Then it leads to the bridge page that has a call to action. And that could be buy now or download now if, if they still haven't received the freebie or if that is the particular freebie that you're giving. And then it leads to a product sales page. So maybe that second page, your bridge page, is giving the freebie thing that you said you would give, and then you upsell them into a $7 offer. That's the third page. The fourth page might be a one-time buy it now of something else. So then you have the opportunity to make a little bit more money before they close out their shopping cart. And then from there, it is a thank you page with another call to action. So again, this particular funnel is to get them into your systems, right? And it is to break even on how you go out and spend money on advertising to continue this funnel to go if you spend money on advertising. So the start of the funnel all the way through the thank you page is your break even parts. And then beyond that is where you truly make your profit. So number one purpose of the back end of your funnel is profit. And that would be subscriptions that you offer, high ticket things that you offer, or other offers coming up down the pipeline. Okay, so now we have that gist, right? We have the gist of how this works. Your funnel is where you break even, and the back end of your funnel is where you make profits. Now, Let's talk about how you actually make money in business. I am a huge proponent to you not putting all your eggs in one basket. The way we make money is long game stuff, right? So we invest in real estate. We have tenants who pay us monthly rent. Now, can I upsell a tenant into something? It's very, very hard. I don't sell insurance, so I can't upsell them into a renter's policy. So there's really no way for me to set up a sales funnel for my tenants, okay? If I had a brick and mortar store, there is really no way for me to truly have a strong upsell strategy outside of placing things at the checkout stand because that is notorious for 
upsells. You go to the grocery store, you're already in a buying mood. You get to the checkout stand, you have a cart of whatever it is you came in for, and those last few items you see in the checkout stand are there on purpose because you're already in a buying mood. So you have a higher chance at adding them to your cart before you actually get checked out. So how to make money in business. Your ways to do so are to get more customers, which makes you more money, is to do repeat business with those same customers, and to sell higher ticket products to increase revenue. With Sugar Creek, I can potentially get a repeat customer. It is very rare because we do mostly weddings. We do have corporate events And occasionally I've been rehired by the same corporate to come back and do another event. But our repeat business is very, very little in comparison to our one-off business. It just happens to be with the industry that we're serving. Can I do higher ticket products to increase revenue? Again, it's me upselling during a sales appointment. But beyond that, there's really nothing higher ticket than I can do. So with Sugar Creek, there's not a whole lot more that I can do than I'm already doing. I can increase my prices. I can go out and advertise to get more customers. But at the end of the day, those are my only ways to make money, which is get more customers and hope I can repeat business. With our roofing company, it's very similar. We can go out and we can get more customers and we can potentially have repeat customers. We can try to upsell them into windows. We can re-roof them in seven to eight years because that's the average lifespan of a roof in Texas. We can try to do some interior projects for them or reside their house or paint or whatever. So we have the ability to do some upsells, but we don't necessarily have a way to sell a higher ticket product outside of windows than the roof because the roof is a fairly large product in and of itself. Most of the time, insurance is covering it. Occasionally, we get a retail project where the customer is paying out of pocket, But a roof is a really large investment, regardless of insurance paying or not. So with our roofing business, there's not a whole lot additional profit activators that we can actually handle within the way the business model is set up. So let's look at other models. Nine to five job. It doesn't have any profit activators. You can't get more customers as a nine to fiver. You can't get repeat business as a nine to fiver and you can't sell high ticket things because you're working for someone else. You might have a role of being a salesperson, but nine to five doesn't allow you to make any more money than outside of what you're making nine to five. Real estate flipping. It only has the ability to get more customers and to sell higher ticket products to increase your revenue. You can't get repeat business or it would be very, very rare for you to get repeat business, but you can get one in three. Brick and mortar, I kind of just talked about that. You have the opportunity to get more customers and to get repeat business, but you can't sell higher ticket products with brick and mortar. It is very challenging based on what it is that you're already selling because you're already attracting a client at the price point that you actively sell. Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, those kinds of things. Again, you have the opportunity to get more customers and to do repeat business, but it is very challenging for you to sell anything higher ticket, especially like on Amazon. If you sell on Amazon, Amazon keeps the customer information, so you have no way to trigger any kind of sales funnels beyond that. MLM types of businesses, same thing. You can get more customers and you can do repeat business, but you can't do higher ticket sales. And then also low ticket affiliate marketing. That is being an affiliate for Amazon. That is being an affiliate for Target. That is being an affiliate for some kind of retail product or being an affiliate for somebody who just does low ticket offers. You have no ability to upsell anybody into something high ticket when they don't even sell something high ticket. So looking at high leverage, high ticket offers allows you to have all three. 
right? It has you to be able to get more customers. It has the ability for repeat business and it has the ability for you to upsell into something more high ticket. So with a high leverage, high ticket offer, you want to, when you're selecting one, you want it to be location independent so that you can work this funnel from anywhere. It's got to be online with a minimum overhead and a minimum startup headache. It's got to be quick profits for you. It must be easy, lucrative, and fun. It must not be hard, annoying, lame, or frustrating. And it's got to have, like I said, all three of those profit activators. So what are the core four of these high leverage, high ticket opportunities? Affiliate marketing, which is what we're talking about digital products, coaching and consulting, events and masterminds. That is truly how you leverage this whole thing. You start out with a freebie, you upsell to a $7 product, you upsell to a $47 product, you upsell into additional products, coaching and consulting, events and masterminds. The framework is there. The framework has been proven. The framework works. So an affiliate program that you choose to align yourself with has to have products that have value, has to have really good profit margins for you, has to be able to have tracking links that last a really long time or last through the duration of the customer's profile, has to have marketing material that you can use to help you actually sell the program, and has to have integrity. Like you shouldn't say yes to an affiliate program without those five things. And that's where we're going to conclude this particular episode of this journey. And I want you to get excited because if I can do this and you are interested in making additional mailbox money, then stay on this ride with me and Tune in each week as I dive further into what this looks like, because I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I have personally attempted to create my own products, but didn't have the bandwidth to do much with them. Like truly, I didn't have the bandwidth to do much with them. And I didn't have the support because I am my own support, right? And even though I've had this podcast for eight plus years I don't feel like I ever like latched onto something that I could truly figure out how to do successfully and get a return. Like I have thrown spaghetti noodles at the wall for years and years and years trying to figure out how how to find something that could be additional mailbox money for me that would allow me to continue doing the things that I do on a daily basis. And like I said, the things that we are already doing, my husband and I are already doing, aren't necessarily satisfying all three of those profit activators. But this will, and this is going to be, hopefully, well, we're going to find out social experiment style, this is going to be the missing thing that I have in the buckets of things that I already do. And if I can figure this out and be be successful at it and teach you along the way, then that's what I'm going to do. Because if I can do this, you can do this. And if this makes me mailbox money, it's going to make you mailbox money because the foundations are all going to be the same. Now, whether or not you choose to do what I'm doing or you choose to find another program, the platform or the foundation is going to all be the same. Remember, pillars and purpose. You've got to be intentional with what you're doing with purpose. Everything else that I do is that. I just haven't figured out how to unlock that with Boss Girl Creative until now, which is why I'm doing this social experiment. Like, again, I've tried a lot of different things through the years. My audience has rotated from, you know, when I first started out as a blogger, and now I'm fully more of an entrepreneur, and I do these other things all to drive back to who I am, Taylor Bradford, and I'm online, and you can get this thing from me, and you can find me over here, and you can listen to this podcast, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can buy my book, which you should if you haven't done so already, Pillars and Purpose, How to Build a Business That Works for You. I walk you through how I've done what it is that I've done. And now this social experiment is going to be 
something else, which I actually will be really excited if I can actually add it into my book, which would make it a second edition. Oh my goodness, I could write a second edition to my book. So stay tuned. Come back each week for an update. Will it fully be a full episode on this? It just depends on where I'm at in the process. So yes and no, stay tuned. And again, grab a copy of my book if you haven't already, bossgirlcreative.com, Pillars book, that's Pillars with an S book, How to Build a Business That Works for You. I have a Kindle version. I have a print version. You get to choose which version you want, but definitely go grab your copy and get creating a strong foundation for yourself so that you can play the long game in business as well. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode. And until next time, I hope you have a great rest of this week. Oh, wait, before I go, thank you truly for your support of my own business journey and this podcast, The Purposely Aligned Entrepreneur. If you know another entrepreneur who is in the same business trenches, who has already found success, but might be feeling a bit lonely in their journey, My hope is that you'll share this podcast and this sisterhood with them because this, what we do day in and day out, isn't meant to be done alone. Speaking of lonely, if you're ready to squash the business journey loneliness, stop what you're doing right now and join the sisterhood. Visit bossgirlcreative.com forward slash sisterhood. I can't wait to see you in there.